I've had a number of requests to demonstrate the design, build and functionality of this mobile wireless workstation. So first of all, I'm going to quickly, in time lapse, put together this amazing Titan AV road case and we'll show you how it all works. fully assembled. Now we'll go through the process of what it does and how it does it. Okay, here she is fully assembled. Flick of one switch. I can power everything up. All right. Starting at the top, we have the Allen & Heath SQ5 digital mixer. This is a 16 fader, but 48 channel mixer over multiple banks. I can output up to 13 sub mixers from here. I have individual control over dynamics and EQ on every channel. And basically this is the brains of the outfit. In the first part of the rack, we have 24 channels of Sennheiser EWDX UHF receivers. These units are so easy to use. Every module has four channels of receiver. I've got individual control over every receiver right down to every parameter, including overriding any mute settings that might be on the individual body pack transmitters. 24 channels of digital rock solid reception. Paired with the EWDX receiver, I have these Sennheiser EWDX SK body packs, beautiful build, solid, they run on AA batteries, or you have the Sennheiser lithium battery. This is guaranteed to give you something in the vicinity of 12 hours of continuous use. The great thing about these is the display on these, even when they're switched off, retain the vital information like what the mic has been named and what frequency it's set at. Now setting the frequencies on these is so easy. Okay, let's look at receiver number one. So at the moment, we've got no link showing, which means that our transmitter is not turned on. Let's switch our transmitter on. And you'll see it's immediately synchronizing with this transmitter. Now, should I want to change the frequency on this, it's as simple as going in, choosing which channel I'm working with. And then I can either do a direct frequency input or I can use channels. So let's Go and change our channel to say something random like channel 25. All I have to do is hit sync on this and press sync on my transmitter. And they are now both talking to each other on the same UHF frequency. To manage all of this RF, I have the EWD ASA Sennheiser antenna splitter. This unit manages the 24 channels flawlessly. It's rock solid. I've not had one dropout so far and it basically brings out two B and C cables to my antenna mast. So from the back of the rack, which we'll go through shortly, basically I have two B and C 50 ohm cables which are coming out of that antenna splitter which I can then pair with either my Zaxcom fins for directional RF reception or I have half wave dipole whip antennas, and that gives me rock solid RF reception in any environment. Okay, so that covers off reception. What about transmission? So down here, I have four stereo channels of IFB or in-ear monitoring transmission. I can transmit eight mono mixes or four stereo mixes to Sennheiser G4 IEM receiver packs. Why have I gone with that? Because then I can also use a G4 transmitter on my breakaway kit to transmit as well. So I've got camera link transmission covered off, I've got in-ear monitoring covered off, and I've got IFBs on location covered off, all in the one setup. This too has its own antenna combiner, plus I've paired with that this Sennheiser omnidirectional 
transmission antenna. It covers off all the frequency ranges that I require for my transmission and it allows me to get it away from the reception so that the two units don't interfere with each other. So I have 24 channels of reception, I have my antenna splitters and combiners, I have my eight mono or four stereo transmissions. I then have this very nifty two rack unit drawer, which enables me to store whatever I need on location. Plus I have the Allen and Heath audio rack breakout box, which gives me an additional 16 inputs and outputs all running through Ethan audio over ethernet back to the SQ5. So the final piece of functionality with all this, of course, is how do I record? So the beauty of the Allen and Heath is I can plug a high speed SSD drive into my USB port. And effectively that becomes my multi-track recorder. Now, whatever I have configured in my matrix, which took me a long time to get my head around, but there's a plenty of videos on how to explain that. I have what's called the SQ drive which gives me multi-track capability. So at the moment, I've got this configured to record 24 tracks of input, plus I've got it configured to record a left and right mix onto separate tracks, and I plug my tentacle sync box in and I'm recording continuous time code as well to synchronize with all of the cameras. So I've covered off every conceivable recording obstacle that I might encounter. I'm also able to record all of my submixes. So if I have submixes going to different cameras or to different headphones, I can enable those in my matrix to record as well. So the editor has ultimate flexibility when it comes to putting together the final product. Recording is as simple as hitting the record button. And you'll notice too, the fans and everything associated with the mixer will shut down. So it remains quiet while ever I'm recording. And of course, I hit stop. That will now export 48K 24-bit individual tracks in a folder ready to be used by the editor. I've even set up soft keys on my mixer so I don't have to be even in that screen. I can hit my soft key to go into record. That's now recording. And another soft key to stop. So before we spin this round and have a nerdy look at the back of it, I just want to point out how much I love this Titan AV workstation. They've done an amazing job of designing it. From the elevation of the mixer to the front and rear doors that come off and quickly become side tables and enable me to keep everything I need ready for a production, including my workstation for laptops and everything. It's just so beautifully thought out. I looked far and wide for something to house all of this. And I was very lucky to discover that Titan AV are actually just up the road in Brisbane. So I was able to go up there, have a look, have a talk to them. They give great advice. They've been fantastic. And I just love it. Nerdy look at the back. So as you can see at the top, I've cleverly put in some sensor lights. So when I go anywhere near the back of this, it actually lights up the entire wiring panel so I can see what's going on, which is very helpful. Okay, what we're looking at here is the rear of the Sennheiser EWDX4 units. Uh, these come with Dante built in. I'm not actually using Dante on these yet, but there is scope for that in the future. Full network capability down the side. These are our analog outputs. And then of course on the side, we have all our RF distribution. So I've looped through RF distribution on the first four and everything goes straight into the antenna splitter. Nicely color coded eight quad analog audio outputs. And I've even gone to the extent of buying individual lengths of power cables so that there's not excessive amount of cabling in the back. Below the receiver units, we have the transmitter units, which are a bit hard to see because they're a bit more shallow in there, but essentially the same story. We've got analog audio coming back out to the mixer. Plus we have RF distribution going to the antenna combiner. I've got two lots of AC distribution. I've got a six panel unit here which powers all of my receivers. Then below that I have the master 240 unit which has a switch on the side. This basically controls the entire unit. One power cable comes out the back and that's all I need to switch everything on. Um, here we have our BNC units, which I've coiled back up and put back inside, but normally they would be out. That is our receivers, that is our transmitters. 
Looking at the back of the SQ5, we've got our 16 physical inputs, so I've basically taken the first 16 outputs of the Sennheiser rack, and that is feeding the 16 physical faders. I have eight outputs, which are feeding my in-ear monitoring IFB transmitters. Then also coming up on the rear of this is what they call their S-Link, which is in fact an ethernet connection that comes out of the expansion rack at the front there where I have the remaining eight outputs of my RF going into the mixer. So it all comes up literally on one Cat5 cable, which is brilliant. In summation, Alan and Heath have done an incredible job with this little mixer. In fact, it does far more than I could ever ask of it. I've in fact had to downscale the internal quality of this from 96 kilohertz to 48. 48 kilohertz processing will give me 32 tracks of onboard recording which I need, I've got 24 inputs, I've got submixes, I've got time code. But the processing power of this thing is just incredible. Sennheiser with their EWDX digital system is absolutely rock solid. I've not had one dropout, I have no intermodulation, it doesn't conflict with its own transmission, G4 frequencies, G4 is running on the analog system, EWDX is running on the digital system, absolutely rock solid. This does everything I could possibly want it to do, plus more. I just want to thank Brisbane Sound Group for giving me some great advice on putting it all together. I want to thank Titan AV for building this amazing rack. And of course, I want to thank Sennheiser for building such a rock-solid digital UHF system.